I am great After that, boy, I need space, boy, I need space I'm not, I'm not gonna stay long. I just want you to, to, to know, if you do your research on the rumors that you hear about King James, all of those rumors started after he died. That's right. When he was here on the earth, he had an excellent reputation by everyone that knew. He was a black man, first off. Nobody talks about that. King James was a black man. The rumor that he was a homosexual didn't happen until after he died, and it was by some people that hated him and were jealous of him while he was still living. So now, hundreds of years later, we got our own people speaking evil against one of our own brothers. King James looked just like you. And his enemies have one of his own brothers saying that he was white and gay. You see how powerful our enemy is? We're trying to take... That's the enemy right there. Right. We're trying to take the power away from him and give it back to you because you're supposed to have that power. But you know what your true power is? This Bible right here. This Bible right here. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure you understood that. The King James and all the that we read up today or whatever is AD. I can Correct. And a lot of the Bible that we read now has been revised and rewritten and retranslated. The King James Bible hasn't been revised. It hasn't. Let, let, let me read you this real quick. Because you, you said you said the Hebrew, right? You said the, the Hebrew was the original text. Are, are you an educated brother? Have you, or are you an Aggie? Did you go to college here? Your, your son did, okay. So your son has studied things. He has a degree. Have you ever questioned the integrity of his education? Or like, do you think he got a good education? Do you think he got a bad education? I think it's fair. Okay, and what made you say it was fair? I say fair because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going on his instructors. Okay, so his instructors. So you have you give credit and credence to the teachers that, that taught him the information that he knows, right? Okay, I want I want to read this to you, and I want to tell I want to see if you had that same thought process based on this statement. Uh, tell them the book that we're reading, and then this is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Now Zondervan is renowned for its scholars. All right, and this is what the Zondervan's research has shown us about the King James Bible. King James Version, the, excuse me, the definition of King James Version. When Elizabeth died in 1603, the crown passed to James I, who had been king of Scotland for 37 years. Now, King James was one of the last kings that ruled during the Dark Ages. And contrary to popular belief, the reason it was called the Dark Ages is because dark-skinned people ruled during that time. That's right. Our people ruled in Europe during the time of the Dark Ages. That's just a fact that I wanted to share with you all because they tell us lies about the Dark Ages that it was a time frame when God was silent. God was never silent because the Bible has always been here. His instructions have always been here, so he was always speaking to us just like he's doing today. That's right. So I just wanted to share that with you. So we're talking about people that look just like you and I. Read who had been king of Scotland for 37 years as James the sixth. Several months after he ascended the throne of England, he authorized. He did what? He authorized. So King James did not write a Bible. We want to make sure we clear that point up because a lot of people say that King James wrote the Bible. He didn't write the Bible. What he did was he authorized. What did he authorize? A new translation of the Bible to replace the Bishop's Bible. Because the Bishop's Bible that was established at that time, it was a lot of controversy that there were many errors there. Because there wasn't a lot of credence and credit to the scholars that translated that Bible. So King James, the king at this point, he authorizes a new translation. And you know what he's translating? He's translating writings that were in place before the time of Christ. Original text. So check this out, the next paragraph. 47 of the best. Of the what? Of the best. So if you had to pick a couple of colleges that were here in the United States as the best, what are some colleges that would come to mind? 
Duke. Duke, okay. Well, somebody else name another college. Okay, give me some HBCUs. Howard University. Howard University, Hampton University. Where else? A and T. Okay, so we got a top three right there. Off the top of the head. Howard, Hampton, A and T. So you gotta think, we're talking about a brother who if he was educated, he would have been educated at an HBCU. He went through the best HBCUs and picked 47 of the best, what? Hebrew and Greek scholars. The king of the time. So not just a man that got a lot of money. The king of that day picked 47 of the best Hebrew scholars. Okay, what is it before you go in there? Were the Hebrews, are they black? Were the, he were the Hebrews black? Absolutely. 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 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day were divided into six groups. Three for the Old Testament, two for the New Testament, and one for the Apocrypha. And you know why there were so many groups? There was accountability there. There was three separate groups set up only for the New Testament to do what? To confirm that everything that's established in this version of the Bible is accurate. Right. So we can put a lot of credit and credence in the King James Version of the Bible. Now, do we put that same credit and credence in the NIV? Absolutely not. Do we put that same credit and credence in uh, New American Standard Version? Absolutely not. But we do put our credit and credence in one of our own brothers that was ordained by God to choose 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the time okay, to translate from the original language to the language that we speak now. The Greeks, what, what nationality did they the Greeks? The original Greeks? Well, I guess you can go there. Well, it depends on what time of, what, it depends on what time, what's, what's, what's a good word? Uh, what dispensation of time that you're speaking about? But because the, the Greeks that we read about uh, in the time of the Maccabees, like give me, uh, give me second, as, uh, second, first Maccabees chapter one. The Greeks that we read about during the time of the Maccabees, those were Edomites, those were white people. But before they were established as a kingdom, Greece went by a different, ter a different name and our people lived there too, because that was a part of the Dark Ages region. We lived there. But, let me see, uh, yeah, First Maccabees chapter one, verse one. King James authorized the translation of this book, which is translated from the Greek, read. The book of First Maccabees chapter one and verse one. Uh -huh. And it happened after that Alexander Son of Philip. Have you heard of King Alexander before? And he was a, a mighty conqueror, right? Was he a white man or a black man? White, right? He was, he was white, yeah. right. So good, so even the young men know. Yeah. Alexander was a white man. So, so I'm, I'm gonna show you what Alexander's position was, right? Son of Philip, uh -huh. the Macedonian. Macedonians were whites at the time. They were Edomites according to the Bible, right? Who came out of the land of Chetum. Uh -huh had smiting Darius, king of the Persians. And so, so he overcame the Persians, right? And Medes, uh -huh. that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. The first over Greece, as it was established at this point in time, it was the first rise of the white man's civilization, his empire, that still rules to this day. So during this dispensation of time, the Greeks were Edomites. They were so-called, we would call them white people, or Caucasian to this day. All right, but the Israelites got scattered from their homeland of Jerusalem and they became known as Grecians. You see what I'm saying? So let's go back to the Zondervan and uh, look up Greek or Grecian. Just want to give you some history so that you understand exactly the context that the Bible is speaking about. So the first point is that no man wrote the Bible. What you have is King James authorized a translation of the Bible. Men have published the writings of the Most High God, but men have not written the Bible. That, these are not their own words that are inspired in their own mind. These are always the Most High's words. Chosen men. I'm gonna show you that too. Give me another reading. Give me another reading. Give me Psalm 68 and 11 while you're getting that. You got you got Greek? All right. Let me see. Greek. Give me that sentence right there. Yeah, Greek. Grecians were that one right there. Give, give, them the, give them the the word we're reading and the definition. This is the word Greece, 
Grecians were Greek speaking Jews. Read it again. Grecians were Greek speaking Jews. Grecians were, were Greek speaking Jews. Because under King Alexander, similar to what we have here in America today, what do they call it? A democracy, right? And what, what happens under democracy? It's ruled by government. It's ruled by government. Do, 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 under democracy, can anybody come in? Do they, is America accepting of all people? Right, right. So, so check this out. Under democracy, this, this concept came from the time of the Greeks. Anybody could come in and be under the, Greece, the Grecian Empire, the Greek Empire. But guess what? You couldn't call yourself by your own nationality anymore. Right. If you called yourself a Jew, well, you couldn't be a Jew anymore. You got to be named after some province that's under the Greeks. Bring it out. For instance, uh, Galatians, Ephesians. These are all provinces that were established under the Greeks, under the Romans. And if you fast forward all the way to today, if I call myself, my, what, if I try to establish my nationality, what do I typically call myself as a black man? African American. African That's no different than me calling myself a Grecian. Bring it up. You see that? Because I'm associating myself with a province of my oppression, not the true nationality and the name that the Most High God has given. That's right. Who got Psalm 68 and 11? All right, go ahead, bring that out for me. Right, you stay up here with me. And then uh, there's another one in uh, Second Ezra. So what, 15 and one? The Book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 11. Uh -huh. The Lord gave the word. Who gave the word? The Lord gave the word. Now it's important that we read these scriptures because we must establish the credibility of this book. Because this book was written by people that look just like you. For people that look just like you. About a future kingdom to come that's going to be ruled by people that look just like you. That's right. And those writings are all throughout this book. So we must establish the credibility of the Bible. Read it again. Right. The Lord gave the word. Uh -huh. Great was the company of those that published it. Those that what? That published it. The Bible says great was the company of those that published it. So the men that we read about in the Bible, they're not the authors of the Bible. God is the author of the Bible. He gave the word. But the men that he chose were holy men and they published it. So God, so let's say you're my father, right? And you know, you don't feel like writing a book, but you got a lot of wisdom. You say, come here, son, sit down. Let me tell you a few things, write it down for me. And you say, you know what, you know, if you study, you know, three times a week, you know, you're gonna get a good grade on the test. Just because I write it down, does it make it my material? No, no. I could be plagiarizing somebody else's material. The men of this book, Moses, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Paul, these are publishers of the Most High's words. Is this what I want? All right, read that for him too. And then give me second Peter. Was it one? One and twenty. The book of Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, and verse one. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. So the Lord says He will put His words in your mouth. That's how the Lord operates. Read and cause them to be written in paper. And do what? And cause them to be written in paper. These are the things, these are the writings that King James authorized to be translated into this book that we call the Bible. That's right. Those writings that were inspired by the Lord that were published by our forefathers and written down on paper. Check this out. Read. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 21. Uh -huh. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. So what that means is that it, it wasn't my own will. If, if, if I was Moses, it wasn't my own will to write the first books, first five books of the Bible. It was the Most High God's will, and he gave me those words. Read. But holy men. What kind of men? But holy men. So these were special men. This just These weren't just some average, everyday Negroes that just had a, a beard and fringes and not eating. You know what I mean? These were holy men. These were special men. Read. But holy men of God spake. As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They were moved by the Spirit of God to speak the words of the Most High God. So what does it mean when it says holy? Give me a, give me Revelate, I mean, give me a Romans 7. When the Bible says that holy men were chosen to, to publish God's words. And I, I need to show you the importance of a few more God's words that give even more credit yes. 
and credibility to the Bible. Because when you walk away today, you must know that the Bible is your book. That's right. And if you decide to put it down and leave it off and not mess with it, you have to know that you're openly rejecting your own culture, your own heritage, and your own future rulership of this planet. Right. Read it. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Wherefore, the law is holy. The what is holy? The law is holy. So the Bible says that the law is holy. So when we read earlier, that read that again. Second Peter chapter one verse twenty one. But holy men, but holy men. So these are men that kept God's laws. So these weren't men that ate a pork chop sandwich. These weren't men that broke God's Sabbath. These weren't men that went to church on Sunday because there is no such thing as church on Sunday. Have anybody? Have you been to church on Sunday? Ever? Have you ever been to church on Sunday? God didn't tell you to go to church on Sunday. So, right. And what day is the Sabbath? There you go. So the holy men that inspired, that, that wrote down the words of God, they were keeping the Sabbath. That's right. They weren't in church on Sunday. So guess what? If you go to church on Sunday, you can never get God's words. That's how that works. That's how that works. Let me finish this up for you. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Uh -huh. Wherefore, the law is holy uh -huh. and the commandment holy uh -huh. and just and good. And good. And good. So it's a couple of, I, I want to show you what these people of the book, these holy men that inspired these writings, I'm sorry, that wrote down these writings look like. Somebody give me Job 30, 30. Somebody else give me something. Just give me a couple color scripts. You give me Job 30, 30 and just go ahead and pull something else. We'll give them a couple color scripts. Job chapter 30 and verse 30. I want you to see what the Bible, the, the people that published these writings of the Bible said about their own selves because I need you to start to be able to see yourself in this book. So let's establish the credibility, which we've done that. No man has written the Bible. God has inspired the writings of the Bible. And these people that receive these inspirations look just like you. Read. The book of Job chapter 30 and verse 30. Uh -huh. My skin. My what? My skin. So we're talking about a physical description of a man. My skin is what? Is black. Is what? Black. I got white pale skin black Read. upon me the forefather Job says that his skin was black upon him the book of Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5 I am black King Solomon the wisest man to ever live and rule and reign it was what I am black King Solomon King David's son so if King Solomon was black King David had to be what black Okay. And guess what? Jesus Christ was a descendant of David, Solomon. So Jesus Christ had to be what? Black. That's right. I am black, but what? But comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, uh -huh. as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Right. You had another question? Because I got a couple more scripts. Okay, my, my last probably two final questions. Okay. Just say it again. The original person, original man. God was Excellent question. It goes perfectly along with what we're going going over right now. Goes perfectly. Um, yep. And then it's one that Jeremiah talked about. It's two scriptures I'm gonna use to prove this. Uh, give me Genesis chapter two, verse seven. All right. Read. The book of Genesis chapter two and verse seven. So Genesis means the beginning. So we're looking. We're talking about the beginning, the formation of mankind. What did the what did the original man look like? And the Lord, the original ruler of the planet, by the way, he just he wasn't just here, just like floating around plucking apples off a tree. He was ruling this place, right? And the Lord, God formed man of the dust of the ground. God formed the first man of the dust of the ground. That's right. What color is the ground? That's right. Black. Black. It's different shades of brown. The deeper you go, the darker it gets. That's right. That's right. But let's just make it even more plain on what that ground looks like. Read this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Uh -huh. Judah, Mona. Judah is, is that is that your tribe? Did we, you're from the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is in mourning then and even now. Why? Because we've broken God's laws and we suffer from the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read. Judah Mona, 
and the gates thereof languish. The gates back in our homeland, Jerusalem, we had gates that that was a walled city. And when you went to the gates, you went to the gates to receive instruction, to, to receive teachings, to receive understanding. So when the Bible says that the gates languish, who would give us that understanding? Our leaders. When the gates languish, that means our leaders languish. Who's your first leader? Your father. Our fathers aren't even in the household. Our leaders are languishing. But let's just say politics and rulership. We don't have any of that. Our people are being led astray. Right. Our gates languish, Read. Right? Do it up, Mona, uh -huh. and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. So that establishes the, the, the credibility of this Bible to 100%. The first, the original man, was a black man, according yeah, to the Bible. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm getting to that. I mean, okay, now, the second question is, from the bloodline, from the original man, how do we get the Caucasian man? Excellent question. We can answer, we can prove all things out the Bible. So, the first thing I need you to understand is that there were a lot of people in yeah, Genesis 25. And the curse, too, you see, the, 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 you know, the, the curse came in there somewhere between when the white man was formed or created or however and then after our curse came in after all that so much of time. Well the, the curse came in the Garden of Eden when we decided to break God's commandments. Right. Well, yeah. And then the curse was perpetuated time and time again and when you read Deuteronomy the 28th chapter you see the curses that would be upon our people over thousands of years. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yes sir. Yes sir. All right. So you want to know the origin of the white man? Yeah. All right. So the white man, according to the Bible, his name is Esau. Esau. And their descendants are called Edomites. Hey, step right on up, ladies, gentlemen, come learn your true history, your true nationality. Genesis chapter 25, all right? The book of Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. So now we just went from Genesis chapter 2 to Genesis chapter 25. There's no difference in any of the men that were on the earth until Genesis 25. So what does that mean? Everybody on earth was black. Right. That's right. Everybody, every nation, every race on earth was black. Right. Not just one race, all races were black. And then pops up in Genesis 25, verse 25, this. And the first came out red. Came out what? Red. Red. Why did it note its pigmentation? Because it was different from any other baby that had been born. Right. No other baby had been born and come out red. Keep reading. But it was two children. Matter of fact, read up. Read up a little bit. Uh, start at verse 21, yeah. Verse 21. Uh -huh. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. So Isaac, one of our forefathers, prayed to the Lord for his wife. His wife had a very troubled pregnancy. The babies were fighting in the womb, and they still fighting on the earth to this day. That's right. Read. Because she was barren, and the Lord was in Excuse me. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Uh -huh. And the children struggled together within her. So, I'm sorry, initially he prayed to the Lord because she was barren. And then when she became pregnant, those two babies, they were twins. I think fraternal twins, right. is that correct? Right. Fraternal twins, they wrestled. They were fighting each other in the womb. And like I said, they're still fighting each other to this day. Read. And the children struggled together within her. Uh -huh. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? If this is a blessing from the Lord, why am I going through so much trouble in this pregnancy? Read. And she went to inquire of the Lord. So it's now she went to pray to the Lord. Read. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. So you would think that if a father and a mother, I'm sorry, a husband and wife have twins together, that both of those twins would be the same what? People. The same nationality, the same race. But God has given uh, what was that, Rebecca? God has given Rebecca a, a prophecy showing her that two different nations are in your womb right now. Not one nation, two completely different nations. Read. And two manner of people. Two completely different type of people. So one, one of these children is going to act like this and another one of these children is going to act completely different and it's going to go even further one of these children is going to look like this and another the other child is going to look like everybody else read shall be separated 
from thy bowels. Uh -huh. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Uh -huh. And the elder shall serve the younger. So the oldest child, the one that comes out first, eventually over time is going to be the servant of the younger child. That's the prophecy about these two children. Now let's get into the physical description of the two. Read. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled. So her eight to nine months. Read. Behold, there were twins in her womb. Fraternal twins like we spoke about. Read. And the first came out red. So the oldest child that's going to eventually become a servant to the younger child came out red. Read. All over like an hairy garment. Red and hairy. Those are the first two descriptions. So just go ahead and get the creative juices flowing in your mind. Hmm, who on the earth is red and hairy? But we're going to keep going on it. Read. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. But hold on. It didn't say anything about what his brother looked like. It didn't say his brother came out red or green because he looked just like everybody else. So we're witnessing the birth of the so-called white man. He's the white man is what red and hairy. If the white man uh, say uh, uh, what's a nickname for a racist white man? Okay, I like that. Uh, <laughs> give me another. One. What you got? What they say about his neck? Redneck. Redneck. There you go. Redneck, right? If a white man gets hurt, if he gets bruised, what do they call it? No, they call it like a strawberry. Why? Because it turns red. If a white man gets upset and angry and frustrated, what happens to his face? He turns red. We're reading about the birth of the red man. But we, our, our, our subconscious has been convoluted. We're all confused. We look at him. We see that he's not white, but we call, he, he's red, but we call him the white man. You see how confused we are? Why? Because we look at that same image right there and call that Jesus. That's but the, right. the whole time the Bible said that he's got uh, hair like wool and skin like brass that was burned in the furnace. All right, keep reading on that. I want to get the, the, the other description about uh, his physical characteristics. Verse 27. Verse 27. Uh -huh. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. Who you know likes to hunt the most? White folks. <laughs> so Red, Harry, likes to hunt. Read. A man of the field. And always like to be outside. The, uh, an outdoorsman. Uh, Bass Pro Shop. Who, right, right. So your question has been answered. Who is the so what's the origin of the so-called white man? Genesis chapter 25 is the origin of the so-called white man. He is Esau. He is the devil that the Bible speaks of according to the Bible. You understand that? Yeah, I'm understanding that. So I've heard different versions of it. Oh, what do they call your of who? Oh, like he was created in a lab. Didn't, didn't exist until way last to years ago. They say he was created in a lab or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's the five percent doctrine. That's that's some foolishness, man. The Bible is true, man. The, and we can prove all things out of this book. That's right. And the Bible proves that the white man been here a lot longer than four hundred years. We've been fighting and warring with the white man for. Fair, fair to say thousands of years now? Thousands of years. This Bible is thousands of years old. He was the man that, when we came out of the wilderness, when we were, yeah, when we were coming out the wilderness, trying to get into our homeland, yeah. he was the first one to try to put us to death and fight against us and be our enemy. And the Bible says he has a perpetual hatred. Go ahead, give me Obadiah. Go ahead, give me Obadiah. We were sold to our enemies, which our perpetual enemy is who? The so-called white man. But it's going to be an end to that man. There will be an end to that man one day. Say again, sis. I'm ready. I'm, I hope so. I'm tired of it. Okay. <laughs> Very soon. Ezekiel 35. Soon. And then you get the Obadiah. It's a short one. It's a short one. Whoever get it first. You got the Ezekiel? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Bring that up. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Right, that's when we were coming out the wilderness. 
their perpetual hatred for us. And somebody give me the one, give, find the one in Genesis 35, they live by the sword and the fatness of the earth. 27? Or? Yeah, Genesis 27. Yeah. Now who's the true Jews of the Bible? Uh-oh. Oh, you asking, yes, yes, asking all the right questions today. You asking all the right questions today. We ain't even gonna spend too much time on Esau. Uh, there, there should be no more of the Mount of Esau. Book of Obadiah, 27 and 27. verse 18. Genesis. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. The Lord has established it that at, at one point in time in the future, when Christ returns, Esau going to get his payback. That's right. Everything that happened to us got to happen to him times two. That's right. And after we all get our get back, mm. after it's all said and done, mm. we're going to wipe them completely off the face of the That's earth. Right. That's right. And they won't exist no more. That's Bring right. It up. All right. Now we're getting the question. Uh, <laughs> Revelation 2. And now you want to know who the real Jews are. That's right. Right. But go ahead. Is um, the part about. That's right. Um, he about to prove it. Watch. Some Jews believe That's right, sis. that Jesus Christ or whatever has already came into the world right. and some people saying he's coming which i know you know and i hear both sides okay jesus is already here these the are great questions the coming is already here some right. people saying the coming is, is, is on the way all right we're going to answer that for you too all right Amen. so we're going to build up to it um yeah, we could drop Esau, man. That's right. Esau gonna That's get right. dropped when Christ comes hey, back, so we'll drop him. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Revelation chapter two, verse nine, because people are pretending to be Jews right now, but they're really not Jews. So check this out. Revelations chapter two and verse nine. Bring it out. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So the Bible says Christ is speaking himself. He says that he knows the works, tribulation, and poverty of the real Jews. What are the works of the real Jews? Us being out here on the street teaching. That's right. Us keeping God's commandments. Right. Us coming together under Zephaniah 2 and 1, gathering ourselves together. That's right. But it says thy poverty. Why? Because we still live in the ghettos. That's right. Although we're trying to resurrect our people and rebuild our nation, mm. we're still on government housing. We're still on Section 8. We still got broken families. We still got baby daddies, baby mamas, and all kind of stuff. Right. So we're still going through the tribulation. We're still getting, we're still getting gunned down by uh, the police officers. That's right. And, and, and we're still killing kill. each other. That's and right. And we're still killing each other. So Christ says He knows all these things is happening. But what does He say? But thou art what? But thou art rich. Why are we rich? Because all the promises, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of the Lord was all given to us. That's right. And we're going to get everything we lost back. That's right. After you repent and keep God's commandments. That's right. Read. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews uh -huh. and are not. There's a nation of people right now that say they are Jews and are not. So what is... Uh, the people that call themselves Jews today, they don't call themselves Jews. They call themselves Jew what? Huh? Jewish. Jewish, right? What does the suffix ish mean? Ish, I-S-H. If you put ish behind anything, what does it mean? It's me. coming out Jesus. No, 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 no. Mm -mm, no, no, no. No, you're talking about like hey, Hebrew, sis. like. Say that again. not really a Jew. It's not real. Ish behind anything means it's not real. That's some bull ish. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Ish. Black ish means it ain't really black. White ish, it ain't really white. Two -ish. Five o'clock ish, ish, it ain't yeah. really five. Yep. Jew ish, you ain't really a Jew. That's right. That's right. You see what I'm saying? No. So the first thing we got to establish is the people that claim to be Jews are not the real Jews. So they stole our birthright? They, they stole what? Our birthright? No, they didn't. No, we took their birthright. We took their birthright and they got mad about it, so they pretending that they still got it. That's what's happening. But look, go back, go back to Jeremiah 17 to 4, and then we're gonna read Deuteronomy. It's a scripture that I read to you earlier that proves who the real Jews are, just in one verse. In one verse. But I'm gonna give you a couple more to just solidify the facts of the Bible. That's what I want you to walk away with today. The facts of the Bible. That the Bible is a true book, it's real, and I can believe everything it says if I have the right interpretation to understand. That's right. Yeah, my whole thing in trying to uh, sum up is 
you know, I was following that kept on asking you about the curse. Right. You know, and we waiting on uh, redemption or the rapture or whatever to come back. And yeah, that's, that's going to come. We redeem, redeem us from all the slavery and all the mischief from the so-called Jews and the white folks and the black folks too that was involved in some of us to trade and slavery and all that kind of stuff. So. Gotcha. And we about to answer that one. Let me let me let me prove to you, to you who the real Jews are, real quick. We're gonna answer uh, whether Christ is coming or not, and then we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna have to head out after that. All right. All right. Give him that real quick. You know, Jeremiah 17. Uh, I want two verses in Deuteronomy 28. Uh, the sign and the wonder, and then the, the slave ships, and then we're gonna go to Second Peter. All right. Go ahead, read that for me. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself. Oh, I'm sorry, 14 and 2. Judah, Judah more. So the, the term Jew, do you know what Jew is short for? The word Jew is short for something. Judah. Jew is an abbreviated term for Judah. The people of the tribe of Judah are referred to as Jews. But over the course of time, Jews are just referred to as everybody on that sign. You follow me? So check this out. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Uh -huh. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. So we're talking about Judah, right? Read. They are black unto the ground. The real Jews are black. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans are the real Jews according to the Bible. That's right. right. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Yeah, my fault. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this was, these were words of Moses. The, the Lord gave these words to Moses to speak to the Israelites that we will call the Jews. Right? To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now give me a sign and a wonder. So the Bible says that if the Israelites, the real Jews, did not keep God's commandments, that all these curses will come upon them. And this is what the curses would be to the real Jews. Read. And they shall be upon thee. When it says they, it's talking about the curses. The curses shall be upon thee. Read. For a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Now give me verse 68. So the curses would be a sign and a wonder. So if I've never been to the Greensboro Farmers Curb Market, how would I know which building it is? Or how would I know which street it's at the corner of? A sign. So what are the signs that will identify the true Jews, the real Israelites according to the Bible? This is just one because we're gonna have to wrap up, but I can go through all of them and show you how they pertain to a particular group of people that are black according to the Bible. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Egypt is just synonymous with bondage or slavery because that's the condition that the Israelites or the Jews were in when they dwelt in Egypt. You follow me? L let me prove it. Exodus 20 and 2, real quick. Because at the, at the time that the Bible was written... Now, who was the Jews that sold our black folks over in Africa and Egypt? to Europeans or Americans or Spartans or the other shit. You, you, those, those were Jews too. Uh, um, you know, those were Jews. And there were some of them with the original Jews. Black folks to save. Well, sold black folks to slavery. Well, when we were sold in, in Africa, Africans sold the Jews into slavery. That's right. right. But they were still black folk. They were still Jews. I mean, yeah. Jews, Jews are Africans. No, Literally. Jews are not. Jews not Africans. Jews not African. Now nah, they, they come from a complete two completely different lineages. Right. You know, Noah had three sons, you remember that, right? Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The Africans come from the lineage of Ham. The Jews, the Israelites, come from the lineage of Shem. So they both remember I told you everybody on earth was black at one point in time. But they all different people. Right. So the Africans and the Jews, they look alike because they have been the least tainted by the so called white men. But they're still two completely different nations of people. So I don't want to go into that because we, we'll, we'll be here till tomorrow. We'll explain every question you got. All right, now, now read Exodus 20. I want you to understand what Egypt is, read. 
The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous with bondage. Give me that other All right, read verse 68 again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So Egypt is what? Bondage. Slavery. Right? We all understand that now. Biblically. Uh, yeah, e Egypt. Yeah, the original Egypt was in Africa. Egypt is just synonymous with bondage. So it's not saying you're necessarily going into Africa again to be slaves. It's just saying you're going to be carried into slavery by this particular mode of transportation. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. This time, when you go into slavery, you're going by way of slave ship. Where's, where's that sign? Check, check for me, a -Rod. So what, what we're reading about in the Bible is the transatlantic slave trade. Because you don't need a ship to go from Israel to Egypt. Remember, the Israelites walked out of Egypt and through the wilderness on foot. So they don't need to go back into Egypt with a ship, not to physical Egypt. Now we're, we came to spiritual Egypt. That's how you know that we are the Israelites according to the Bible. You follow me on that? This was Bible prophecy in Deuteronomy 28 and the 68th verse. All right? So you read about history, prophecy, and the fulfillment all throughout the Bible. Uh, you got that for me in Matthew 24? Matthew chapter 24. I think it's verse like 36, 32 or something like that. No man know the day. You got it? All right, so this is, this is the last question we're going to answer for you, and we're going to head out. But you got our phone number. You can call us. You can come to the school, and we'll answer all of your questions. You from Virginia? Where you live? Oh, man. That's a beautiful thing. We came all the way out here to meet you right here, and we right down the street from each other. All right, let me, let me answer this last question for you, and then we'll head out. All right. So your question was, has Christ come back already or is he to come back in the future? The short answer is no, he's, he has not come back for the last time yet. He's been on the earth in the past, but he's not come back again yet as prophesied. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of, of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. So we don't know the day or the hour when Christ is going to come back. But the Bible does give us prophecy to know some things or events that will occur to signify that his coming is here or that it's happened already. I'm going to give you one example to, to prove to you that it hasn't happened yet. Because these things are associated with his coming. You got that in Peter? Okay. Right, bring that up. The book of First Peter, excuse me, Second Peter, chapter three and verse ten. But the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord is the return of Christ. That that rapture, that second coming that we're all talking about, has it happened or has it not happened? This is the biblical prophecy of the day of the Lord, and everything else we read you was true, and it already happened. This we can believe to be true. So either it happened already, and you'll be able to tell me. Or it hasn't happened, and we're still waiting for Christ to return. So you tell me. Read. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. What does that mean? It means exactly what we just read. No man's going to know the day or the hour. Because if you did, you'd be able to try to pull wool over Christ's eyes and act like you've been living right. Live wicked. Oh, you know Christ's coming next week. So I'm going to be wicked all this week because I know he's coming next Thursday. And I'm going to put my fringes on on Tuesday and Wednesday night. Nah, I don't work like that. It's coming as a thief in the night. Read. And the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. You know what that great noise is? He goes see. Boom. Bombs dropping on America. That's the fight. Not only will the heavens, the literal sky is going to be on fire. From It's, it's going to be so much fire in Babylon. But the heavens also going into the rulership. The empires that's here on this earth will be permanently changed when Christ returns. So America won't be existing anymore once Christ returns. China's no longer going to be a superpower. The Arabians aren't going to be hoarding all the oil. It's not going to be a conflict between... Uh, I, yeah, goods and... Yeah, all of that stuff they talk about on the news is going to cease to exist. All the heavens are going to pass away. That's right. Read. <coughs> 
and the elements, the, what? the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What kind of heat will cause the elements to melt? Thermal nuclear fire. The third world war will come before Christ returns. And that's going to be a nuclear war. That's how we know Christ hasn't come back. The Bible prophesies that the third world war will come and then Christ will return. Who will survive? Those that keep God's commandments. That's, That's right. right. Give me Matthew chapter 26. We can answer all the rest of your questions when you come to the... We got to save something for the school. If we give everything to you now, you ain't going to show up. <laughs> You're going to start your own congregation. No. <laughs> we used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.